Dr. Fizz here, Chapter E on our course in Theoretical Physics. The two main ideas in this chapter are proving two theorems. The first is the divergence theorem, and we're going to do that now. We're going to consider an integral over an area, an enclosed area, similar to what we've looked at in our the application of the Maxwell equations. In fact, you recognize the left side here of the first Maxwell equation. But consider this electric field to be a general force of, or a vector field, even it doesn't have to be a force, it could be any vector field, and we're going to look at this in general. So by doing that, we set up a nice simple surface integral, ideal case, nice little cube, and we're going to look at an electric field here, or a vector field, E, in the z direction for simplification and the central idea then can be easily understood. So we have a cube here and we want to take a surface integral of the enclosed volume. You have six walls of the cube and the differential area element for each of those here is given by like dx dy or dx dz depending on what wall you're at and the direction for that differential area is normal to the surface pointing away from the center or the enclosure so here the normal is k hat underneath it's negative k hat because it points away from the center here the normal would be j hat this is the y direction over on the left side would be negative in the negative y direction, negative j hat. Over here in the front, it would be along the x axis, i hat. And in the back, negative i hat. Now, the nice thing about the uh, surface uh, integral here has a dot product. So, since our electric field is in the z direction, it only has a z component, which we emphasize here by putting e sub z, but the e magnitude has a z component, only a z component, so that means the vector direction is k hat. So k dot k will give a 1 in the surface integral for the top. Over here in the bottom you'll have a k hat for the e vector and a negative k hat for the surface that'll give a negative. But notice on these vertical walls all of the unit vectors point perpendicular to the z direction so we don't have to worry about those because k hat dot n hat where n hat is the normal for one of those is going to give you zero since the angle between the two unit vectors is 90 degrees in each case and the cosine of 90 is equal to zero. So we only have two to worry about the top and the bottom and here at the bottom we have the electric field evaluated x y and z and we'll shrink this cube, you know, take the limit in a second. And at the top, we have the electric field x, y, and z plus delta z. So the product at the top would be simply delta x delta y times the electric field at that top surface. At the bottom, since the electric field points up and the unit vector for the area points down, the cosine of 180 is negative 1, so we put a minus sign here and use the value at the bottom, e at x, y, and z, times delta x, delta y. So this is the setup. This is the result. Only two surfaces give non-zero values. All other surfaces, the other four vertical ones, give zero because the dot product of the electric field vector and the normal for each of those surfaces gives us zero. Now we notice that the derivative, the partial derivative of E sub Z with respect to Z is almost staring us in the face. So we multiply by delta Z over delta Z so we can have the partial derivative. We don't change anything when we do that. And when we do our integral, we set up the integral, the integral of the derivative of the E sub Z with respect to Z integrate with respect to dz doesn't change anything. So as you can see here, this doesn't change anything. And when you do the integral, it's not going to change anything. So we go to the integral form now. 
and the integral form gives us an integral over the volume. I like to put a V here to emphasize that's the volume that goes with the volume of that enclosed surface integration. So you can think of this surface integration as having a surface that encloses on itself and that's the volume inside and now we're going to integrate over that volume and this is a nice beautiful formula which we can easily see if we had the electric field with components in the Y and x and y direction that this would be replaced by adding the results of the two other cases. Now this brings us to a nice notational definition, the del operator, which is defined as a derivative with respect to x, the derivative of something with respect to x i hat plus the other two Di uh, dimensions and that's why we call this a vector operator. It operates on something. It wants to do something to whatever's on the right hand side. So if we take the dot product with the electric field vector, remember how dot products were? You go with i dot i. So i dot i is the relevant thing. And for i dot i you'll have the e sub x that goes with the i with the electric vector and the d dx goes with the i uh, for the uh, operator so when you take the i dot i this will operate on the e sub x and similarly for the other two um, dimensions so del dot e is equal to the partial the sum of the partial derivatives of each component with respect to its component variable so once we have that we can write the surface integral as a volume integral with this notation del dot e and that is the divergence theorem.